Welcome back everyone. The first thing you're gonna need for this shape is an icosidodecahedron, just like this. This has an edge length of nine magnets, which is the same size that I made in my tutorial for how to make these. Uh, I make a small one and a large one in that video. The large one is this size. Um, so I will post a link in the description and you can go watch that video to see how to make one of these. Next, you're gonna need 20 of these subunits here. The way that you make these is by starting with uh, two rings of 35 magnets and six rings of 11 magnets. You cut the six rings of 11 magnets up into three double stacks and note that they are the opposite polarity of the big ring. So to assemble the subunit, what you do is take this big ring, pinch it into thirds, just like this. Um, you usually don't get the edge length right the first time. So if you kind of shuffle these around a little bit, eventually you can get it to where all of the edge lengths are even and this is what it's supposed to look like. With these, similarly, you pinch them down into straight pieces. You pull this single magnet off the end so that it looks like that. And you do that to all three of those. Once you've done that, these attach in the center here. Just like that. Like that. Now it's important to note that these bottom two magnets need to connect to either side when they go down or else this thing is not particularly stable. And again, you need 20 of these. Next, you're going to need 12 of these subunits here. You again need stacked rings of 11 magnets. This time you need 10 rings. Um, again, cut these up into long straight or into double rings and then make long straight pieces out of them. And these attach together kind of like if you were building an icosahedron frame for anyone who has built one of those. They just come together like that. At the top, you need to add just a ring of five magnets, just like that. And again, you need 12 of these. You also need 12 of these subunits. These are a little bit more involved. You start out by making a pentagonal bipyramid with an edge length of four. So you do that by initially making a ring of five like that. Make another one that is one layer larger. And then you make a third one that is one layer larger than that. Like that, see. This one fits in there. You fold it over so you get this shape. This fits inside the next one. and you have a little pentagonal bipyramid. You also need 10 stacked rings of, uh, I believe these are, yeah, 22 magnets. You cut these up into uh, straight pieces. And you want to pull the single magnet off the point like you did with those other ones. and then they will fit right here on these edges. If the polarity doesn't want to go, just flip this upside down, just like that. From here, what you want to do is take a chain of magnets and remove these magnets that are out here on the corners of the bipyramid. Then you want to remove the pentagon from on top and you want to remove five magnets here, the ones that align with the edges, not the ones in between the edges. Like that. From here you make another ring of five and set it down so that it interlinks in with those other five loose magnets. And you're almost done with these subunits. The only other thing 
is that it's a little hard to tell, but those three magnets in there are not touching and you want them to because otherwise there's not a lot of strength to the subunit. So if you kind of bend these edges up and press in here with uh, your thumb a little bit and you can get them to all come into contact and at that point you've completed the subunit. Again, you need 12 of those. Finally, you just need uh, 30 uh, rings of six. Okay, and so now to begin building this shape, you need to take your uh, 30 rings of six and cut several of them up into single rings. Okay, and what you do with these is you take each ring, you pinch it down so that it's flat, and then each one on the icosidodecahedron at the vertex there, it should go down just like that. You want to do that to all the vertices surrounding three of the five-sided faces for now. Okay, and so again, these are around that pentagon, that pentagon, and that one. So three that are adjacent. Now at this point, we're going to start adding some of these larger subunits on and we kind of have to worry about stability. So what I do during the early phases of building here is I actually get a bowl and some bubble wrap. Now these two things together happen to be just about the right size to where I can place the icosidodecahedron inside and it is kind of cushioned around the sides a little bit so it's a lot less likely to collapse during these next few steps. The next thing you want to do is take these subunits. The way they go down is that the edges that are a little bit more downward angled um, are going to go so that these two magnets on every edge will fit right in the middle of these uh, rings of six that you just placed down. So this will go just like that. Um, now you may have noticed that that being the case, these edges are a little bit too long. And I made them that way so that these could sit like this while they were uh, waiting to be joined up with the, their neighbors. So when you attach the next ones down, you need to remove three magnets from one of these edges here, or I'm actually doing the wrong edge, one of these edges here, and then one magnet from one of those edges. That'll make them to be the right length, so that when you attach the next one down, it goes down without too terribly much difficulty. Now, these are maybe a little bit oversized for the icosid or decahedron that they're fitting down on. And it ends up working out because these provide enough tensile stress to keep all the edges straight and not bent. But you do kind of have to bend these edges when you put them down. So go ahead and put these on the triangle faces surrounding those three pentagon faces. Uh, it turns out I needed more of these hexagon rings than I uh, had anticipated. I'll have to do a couple more of these in order to put the rest of these on.
All right, so now at this point, you have uh, these subunits wrapped around all three of those pentagon faces. What you need to do next is take three of these subunits and each of them is going to go down like that, connecting five of those other subunits together. Um, because getting all five edges to go down can be a little bit tricky, um, I like to remove the single magnets from these points, add them onto these edges, and then when they go down, they'll just click together. And there you go, you've added those three subunits on. Now at this point, we're going to add three of these points on. Um, the way that these go down is, uh, I guess, a little unconventional compared to how I've used them before. Um, you want to remove the points from all five edges and the ends these two magnets at the very tip on the outside of them are going to attach to two of the uh, ring of six that you've placed down in here. That's kind of the joint between this outer and inner polyhedron. That's what this is going to connect to. Um, placing these down on top of the that pentagonal face inside here is kind of a challenge. These are opposite polarity edges from these ones and they really like to stick to the sides. So go slowly, be very careful, and if it does stick, you can just use a card to get it unstuck. Okay, that was a bit of an extreme example for that first one. They don't all always go that poorly. Um, go ahead and add the other two on. Okay, so those uh, second two were a little bit more typical of how that usually goes. They caused some problems, but that first one was just uh, an exceptionally difficult one for whatever reason. Um, at this point, what you want to do is create a little bit of a support here. You will need uh, three rings of six. You should have a bunch of leftover magnets by now, so just make it out of those. What you want to do is pinch one end down into a triangle and then this will go on top of that hexagon. Because these are coming in at different polarities, it's a little bit tricky to get this to fit down, but yeah, just like that is how it goes. It doesn't always go first try, that time it did. Uh, now finally, before we flip this thing over and make this the base, uh, we wanna remove three magnets. Right here on the very tips of those three points, um, because those raise it up just a little bit too high and prevent it from sitting on a flat surface. So if you remove those, it'll be better. Just like that. Now it's time to go ahead and flip it over. As uh, per the usual with these, this is probably one of the more risky parts of the whole process. So just be extremely careful while you flip it over. Okay, um, you may have to do like I did and repair a couple edges here and there, um, but once you've flipped it over, you are uh, ready to get to work on the next part. Go ahead and come back to your rings of six, cut the rest of them up and cover the rest of these corners that you haven't done yet. Okay, now that you have uh, 
added the rest of those uh, rings of six on, go ahead and complete the outer polyhedron by adding the rest of these on. Okay, so now that you're at this point, you need to add the uh, rest of these five-sided point subunits on. Uh, I generally find that when you're working with these, um, it's best to kind of start from the bottom and move towards the top. And once you have these all on, then you'll be done. And there you go. That is how you build this shape. This is uh, the interlaced polyhedra. This one is uh, version 12. Uh, as you saw, there's an icosidodecahedron on the inside, uh, and that is stellated. And the stellated icosidodecahedron is interlaced with this uh, large pentacostodecahedron. Uh, as far as symmetry goes, this one actually uh, has a lot of similarity to uh, the fifth version of these interlaced polyhedric constructions that I did uh, because it's based around a stellated icosidodecahedron, but the uh, outer polyhedron is different, and I thought this one looks uh, good enough in its own right to kind of give it a number in the series and make it its own video. Definitely looks different enough. Uh, one interesting thing about this is that this uh, Pentacus dodecahedron outside shape is pretty strong. You know, most things that are made out of, you know, almost 9,000 magnets, you can't really just kind of pick up and palm with one hand like this without them falling apart. So I think that's kind of an interesting aspect of this shape is that it's kind of a lot stronger than you would expect for uh, its size. So I guess I'm going to go ahead and smash it now.